This video is designed to help Year 12 accounting students know and understand how to record using the first in first out method or FIFO. So recording inventory using FIFO. First thing is we need to understand what this term is. So FIFO is a method of valuing inventory that assumes that unless we otherwise indicate the first items that come into our business or are purchased are the first that we sell. So this is often used as a, um, a method where individual labeling is not possible or practical. So we've already looked at identified cost. This is a different method that you might use if identified cost is not suitable. So the important thing to know is that it is an assumption. So we are assuming that this is happening, but that may not always be the case. And we'll talk a little bit about the limitations later on. The, I suppose some of the reasons why this might be um, considered an assumption. If we think about the example of milk, when we go to a supermarket, supermarkets arrange their milk um, fridges according to FIFO. So they put the oldest milk at the front and the newest milk at the back. The idea is they want to, um, customers to take the older milk first. So what do a lot of people do when they get to the milk fridge? they go to the back of the fridge and they take the one that is newest or has the longest expiry. So that's a good example of why this is considered an assumption because we stack our shelves according to FIFO doesn't mean that that's what our customers uh, take in terms of stock or inventory. So applying FIFO to different transactions. For purchases and purchase returns, FIFO does not need to be applied. And the reason why is because the cost price is identified by the supplier and that's done through the source documents, so on our invoices or our credit notes. So where there is a price given, we would be recording using that. For most transactions in the out section, so that includes sales, drawings of inventory or inventory for advertising purposes, we're going to apply FIFO. And this is where the oldest inventory is assumed to be leaving the business first. For sales returns, the Year 12 accounting course deals with these in a specific way. In this course, the cost price of a sales return will be provided. Now, it can be provided in a couple of different ways. It can be done either through the source documents or the inventory card. And we'll see an example of that uh, from one of the, the sample transactions in a minute. So recording sales of inventory using FIFO, I've taken an example from the Cambridge textbook here to help us explain it. So on the 5th of October, Woolly Good sold 10 coats to V-Rail for $250 plus GST each and it created invoice 132. So we assume that the oldest inventory is sold first and you can see that before this transaction on the 5th of October, we had the following balance. We had eight coats with a cost price of $100 and we had 20 coats with a cost price of $120. So when we're applying FIFO, we're going to move the oldest stock out first. Now we need to move 10. So I'm going to move eight of the $100 stock and then I still have to move two out. So I'm going to take two of the $120 inventory there. So the difference you'll see automatically between identified cost and FIFO is that the scenario doesn't tell us which stock we're taking. We have to apply this assumption. So this is how it calculates our inventory going out by taking the oldest stock and then taking what's left or needed to be taken out from the newer uh, stock or inventory. So what does this look like in the general journal? So on October 5th, we would still use the same uh, accounts as always. So in this case, it's an invoice and it is to V-Rail. So I know that that's going to create um, a couple of different things. So if I just sketch it out over here, we know that we're going to have sales, we're going to have GST clearing, and <clears throat> we're going to have an account receivable for VLINE. We're also going to have cost of sales and we're going to have inventory. 
Now, a lot of people have been asking, do I need to put the debits first and then the credits second? Um, it is common practice for you to put your debits first. However, you, you're you not penalised if you um, put your credits first. So I always say to my students, think about the uh, accounts you're most comfortable with and put those in or do what I've done here and sketch it out before you put it into your journal. So I know that sales are increasing, so they're going to be credited. I know that my account receivable is increasing and that's going to be debited. Therefore, if I'm not as confident with my GST clearing, then I know that that is going to be have to be credited with the, the difference uh, as well. I could also think about the fact that I'm collecting GST. That increases my liability. Cost of sales is going to be increasing and inventory because it's going out is going to be decreasing. So now I need to transfer that information over into my general journal. So if I look here, I've got account receivable. For VLINE. I've got sales and I've got GST clearing. So I had 10 coats and I sold them. This is the selling price of $250 each plus GST. So I know that my sales are going to be 250 times 10. I know that my GST is going to be 10% of that. So I know that the total amount, I add those two together. So it'll be 2750. That's the total amount that I'm owed by VLINE. I then have my cost of sales and my inventory. So in this case, I calculate my cost of sales and inventory from what's occurring in the inventory card. So it would be 800 plus 240. So that would be 1040 sitting in there. And then I have my narration. So I would say here, credit sale of 10, and I'm going to say which coats, so they're the woolen coat, I'll just put large, give the detail, um, credit sale of 10 woolen coats, and I can just put in here my transaction invoice 132. So you can see there that I've got my completed general journal and I've taken the selling price from the little scenario and I've taken my cost price from the, uh, from the inventory card. So let's have a look at a sales return now. So on the 19th of October, VRail has returned three of the coats that they purchased on the 5th. So three of the coats that they bought from us in that transaction we just recorded, they're going to be now returning because they were too large. And we have given them a credit of $250 plus GST for each of the coats. So this is an example where sales returns are identified. So you can see here that they haven't actually told us the cost price to apply. However, they have told us which transaction we need to go back and look at so we know that we need to look at the transaction that happened on the 5th to then identify which coats need to be returned. So we need to reverse this sale. So we are assuming that the last inventory that was out is the first to go back into the business. So I'll explain what that means when we have a look at the recording on the next slide. But remember this, the last inventory out is the first to go back in. Okay, so here is the inventory card that shows us the original transaction on the 5th and now the sales return on the 19th. So you'll notice that FIFO does not identify the cost price for the sales returns, but for this course, it'll be found on the source documents. So they'll either give you information about the original invoice or the inventory cards. So 
if the cost price is given, use this. Otherwise, reverse FIFO. So what we mean by this is you need to locate the original cost prices of the sale that's being returned. So we know that of this transaction on the 5th, where we had 8 of the $100 um, units and 2 of the $120 units, 3 of these are being returned. Okay. If that sale involves two cost prices like this one, we assume, once again it's an assumption, that the last items out are the first returned. So what that means is we're assuming that these items, the $120 units, are going to get returned and then some of the $100 units are going to get returned. So there's going to be both of those $120 units and then one of the $100 units. Now there's also some ways in which we lay this out in the inventory card. So we list the older stock returned earlier in the in column. So what I mean by this is you'll notice that I've still listed the $100 units first and then the $120 units. So I'm following my balance sort of process in here. Okay, so this is sort of the tricky part of inventory cards is knowing how to lay them out correctly. So how do we record this sales return of inventory? Well, we follow the same practice as before. So once again, you can sketch this out before you go into your general uh, journal. And we know that it's going to affect sales returns. We know that it's going to affect GST clearing. And we know that it's going to affect the account receivable of VLINE. We also know it's going to affect inventory and it's going to affect cost of sales as well. So you might want to pause the video here, take some time to think about how it's going to affect each of these and then have a go at recording them. So with our sales return, we know that they returned three of the items and they were given a credit of $250 each. So we know that on the October 19, that we are going to have a sales return. And this is going to be for a total debit of 750. So I calculate this because I take the 250 credit and I times it by the number of units. I then also have a GST clearing that is going to be debited and that's going to be debited 75. Once again, this is 25, so that's the 10% times the number of units. I then have my account receivable. For VLINE. And that is going to be 825 because it is these two figures added together. I then have my inventory. Now that is increasing because it's coming back into our business and the cost of sales. To calculate the inventory, I take the total amount of those items that were returned. So that's going to be 340 in both of those areas. And then we simply have a sales return for our narration of three. So give the quantity coats and you can even use the code here. So WC1L, I get that from up in my inventory card titles by v, uh, v Rail. Sorry, not V Line, V Rail, I should say. And if they give you the reason, always include it in your narration. And of course, include your source document as well. So this is how you would process a sales return. Cost of benefits of FIFO. These are some really common ones, great for a discussion question uh, in accounting as well. So the benefits are, it can be applied to all types of inventory. It doesn't matter if it's large or small. And it's also, I suppose, less cost 
to administer than identified cost because you don't need to have someone employed to label things, takes less time uh, to be able to um, record using this system. You can still verify it by source documents, so it still gives you verifiability and faithful representation, but it is not 100% accurate. Uh, this is because it is an assumption, so we're assuming or we're hoping that these things are going to happen doesn't mean that it's always going to be the case and that means that it can lead to potential inaccuracy in cost of sales and inventory accounts. So a good way to discuss this would be to think about why FIFO supports but also potentially violates verifiability and faithful representation. So this gives you a snapshot of how to record some of the trickier transactions of FIFO uh, for you to then practice with your application exercises.